Coach, um, I know I um, really appreciate you taking the time to, to come on the show and, and talk a little bit QB playing a little bit of offense. So uh, let's get started. Yeah, sounds great, Justin. Thanks for having me on. I, I got to tell you real quick, man, I'm so impressed with your bookshelf that you got. Drop. I'm, I'm kind of kind of jealous. I need to <laughs> I need to step my Zoom game up a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's uh, reading has been one of my uh, my hobbies. So it's I've got just about every book you can think of. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. All right, so I, I know you got a presentation that you wanted to, to get started, and uh, we can we can pull that up and we'll get rocking and rolling. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good, man. So I, I've watched. Uh, I think you know the content you're putting out is is fantastic. I've watched a lot of the other videos, and and so I know some of the questions that you've kind of um, asked other other coordinators, and and so just to have a visual to kind of go along with it. I just put a little uh, PowerPoint together. And then at the end, there's some, some individual drills from a quarterback standpoint uh, that we feel like is, is good for us. And so just want to talk a little bit about that at the end. And, and then, um, then you, if there's any other different questions or anything you want to pop in, yeah. uh, let it rip. So, Sounds great. Um, uh, so from an offensive standpoint, Justin, we have a, a, an offensive kind of nickname. So we, we go, we call ourselves Teal Team Six. So that's, kind of a, uh, uh, you know, paying tribute to uh, the Navy SEAL teams. Obviously, we are not the Navy SEAL teams, nothing near like that. But we, we um, want that type of commitment to each other. We want that type of commitment to pushing through difficult scenarios, pushing through adversity um, and all that. So we kind of changed around, obviously, teal because that's our, that's our color. So it's teal team, trying to get everybody focused on, on each other. No individual is more important than the team. And then six, because every time we take – take the field that is the goal to, to score six points and you and I were talking right before this this started that's where we got improved you know we got in the end of the red zone last year and um and and, and kind of settled for field goals in situations where you got to score touchdowns if you don't win football games we want to take our next step up um in our league in the Sun Belt Conference which is a really really uh, a lot of high quality football a lot of high uh, quality football coaches in this league and so for us to take that next step man we gotta we gotta finish drives uh, with touchdowns. I love it. And, uh, and so the three things, so the, the, what you see at the bottom, secure, punish, score, that's our job. That's our creed. That's our purpose. Um, so every offensive uh, uh, unit meeting that we have uh, will begin by, hey, Teal Team 6, stand up. What's your job? And, uh, and everybody in the room says secure, punish, score. Secure, punish, score. And, um, and we've tried to, we've tried to keep it really, you know, concise, really simple. So it, it, it's what they're saying, you know, and, and I think, you know, uh, it, it's sticking with them when if, if one of your players gets interviewed and they they say those those things, you know, well, our biggest th theme as a team right now is the number 24. So we were we finished up five and seven last year. We've been five and seven the last two years. We've been one game away from uh, becoming bowl eligible. Um, Coastal, we just made the jump from FCS to FBS three years ago. So right. we've been right, knocking on the door. Uh, of getting bowl eligibility and um, so five out of those seven lost 24 points late in the game so if, if it's really cool to see a lot of our players in interviews or, or, or on social media or, or hearing them just talk about stuff they're, they're hearing them say the number 24 what can I do to make up that gap of 24 points that's all we got that's what we got to make up the 24 points and it's it's the way we eat it's the way we sleep it's the way we interact with each other it's the way we work it's all those things uh, that add up. And um, so I just use that example to say, you know, how do I know that, that what the message that I'm trying to get across to our players is sticking? Well, it's becoming a part of their uh, language and they're, they're saying those things. And I think if you, um, if you talk to any of our players right now, if you talk to one of our offense players, they would say, we're till team six, secure, punish, score. So that's kind of where it starts for us um, from a um, – uh, player standpoint. So just to go into further, what, what, what do those things mean to us? And I know a lot of what you ask about is offensive philosophy and, and all those different things. So um, secure obviously means ball security. And, um, and everybody talks about that. Everybody says, you know, hey, we want to protect the football. But I think it, you've got to take it a step further with your players. And, and they truly have to understand the why if you want them to completely buy into the things you're trying to um, uh, trying to get them to buy into. So in 2019, that first bullet point, when we lost the turnover margin in the game, uh, we were 0-4. Uh, 
Um, when we won the turnover margin, we were three and one. When we tied the turnover margin, we were two and two. So uh, the second bullet point, we're going to do ball security drills every single day. And it's not the most glamorous drills that we do. It's not the most exciting drills that we do. Most of the players hate doing them. You know, they're, they're not that fun, right? They're, they're, right. they're kind of the, the, the blue collar getting after it, get, getting hit by bags, all that stuff. But you have to answer the why. Okay, guys, this is why we're doing those ball scooter drills. We're not just filling up a, a, a five-minute segment of practice um, by making you guys run around and do these different ball scooter drills. The why is because, hey, well, we didn't take care of the football. We were freaking 0-4. How do we make up 24 points? This is how we do it. And it's not just a lot of those, you know, obviously your ball security drills are mostly how to, how to carry the ball correctly. Um, you know, some of those turnovers last year are bad decision interceptions, you know, so how do we, this is why it's so important. So uh, the third bullet point right there, I just use this as an example. We're really big as a coaching staff on using one word commands at practice. Um, and so chin is the example of that. So when our guys, um, are, 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 you know, have a, a, a ball security issue during practice. If that ball comes down, we're using one word. It's chin. And chin to us means the ball is, means all the things you always say, high and tight, right. uh, five points of pressure, but it's, 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 it's down to its concise one word, chin. Hey, if that ball gets away from my chin, chin. Get it because when we're in, we can go into more detail and explain things in the medium, but when we're on the practice field, I want one word to tell them, oh, crap, the ball – was not pointed at my chin. Right. Um, then the last two pieces of, of secure to us is more so from us on a coaching, from a, a coaching staff standpoint, game plan standpoint, eliminating the negative yardage plays, um, making sure we're running run plays into good looks from a formational standpoint. And then the big part of that is your opponent personnel breakdown. If we don't have good matchups on the field, like if we, we're playing against a stud defensive end in this league, and there's a bunch of them in the Sun Belt Conference. Yeah, there is. Got a, we've got a true freshman offensive tackle. We're not being very smart if we're just sitting there making him drop back pass. How can we chip him? How can we uh, run speed option at him to take a little pressure off that tackle? So th that kind of enco encompasses the first part of, of, uh, of, our, of our creed there, secure. Um, the second one is punish. And um, that's just the style of play, the brand of play we want to have. Um, and and this is what we were we said uh, over and over and over as an offensive unit in the spring. No one plays harder than Coastal. When people watch us on, on tape, they're not going to be like, oh, my God, what an um, just unbelievable talent. There's talent on our on our roster, just like there's talent on other rosters. But I want people to be blown away by how hard you guys play. And don't do it because I'm asking you to do it. Don't do it because your position coach. Do it because you truly, truly love your teammate. And you will freaking do whatever it takes to, to help him succeed. And, and help this program to succeed, but do it for each other. So I, that's what I want our brand to be. Nobody plays harder than Coastal. And that, how do I get that done as a, as a coordinator? Um, man, it was such a great example. And to backtrack a little bit too, Justin, last year was my first year as a co-offensive coordinator. So I've got so much to learn, so much to grow. I'm probably, if we talked again a year from now, I'd say, I'll probably say, I was an idiot. <laughs> So much, you know, every year you're going to learn more. Um, but um, but just in, from a unit meeting standpoint, trying to achieve the type of effort and commitment to playing to each other, we have above the line and below the line uh, segments of these unit meetings. And so we'll tag three clips from practice or three clips from the game where the above the line effort, above the line execution, and and not just like a highlight play, but you know, um, the greatest example of this is from last this past spring. We were in a uh, scrimmage situation, and uh, our two outside receivers, we were not going to dig out safeties. We kind of went there and then kind of peeled off, didn't get to them. Safety makes the tackle. It's a six-yard game. And so the next unit meeting, we highlighted those guys and not to embarrass them or call them out or anything. It's just like, hey, this is not standard. This is not no one plays harder than Coastal. Right. Um, and we showed clips from other teams um, you know, in college football, where receivers are going in there and digging out the safety and saying, hey, look, this, this created a 20-yard play. So the next scrimmage, they both fly in there. They get their safeties cut off and it ends up being a 40-yard touchdown run. So just trying to emphasize that. So a couple of uh, stats, maybe the sexiest stats on the planet, but a couple of, of standpoints where we kind of stand out and it kind of plays into that, you know, we want to we want to punish, we want to be a physical offense. 
our time of possession, we're 10 in the country. Hold on one sec, Coach. The connection's going in and out on us. We like to say we're one of the, the slowest no-huddle teams in the country. Okay. Hold on one sec. All right. You there? Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. We're good now. Yep. Do I have to start all the way over? No, you're at time of possession. So we'll go back to time of possession. Yeah. So just time of possession. We're 10th in the country last year. Uh, Our defense loves us for that. And, And when I was in high school playing quarterback, I wouldn't have said time of possession, man. I, that's what I want to really dominate uh, football in. But now I see it from a different lens, coach lens, and what it does for your defense, keeping them off the field is a, is a big deal, and limiting the possessions of the other team. And then strike mode mentality. I get in fourth down conversion rate. We're 23 out of 29 attempts. Um, so we're really aggressive when we get into the strike mode part of the field, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of tie into that. But that, again, that, is, that plays into that punish uh, uh, mindset. And then, obviously, you got you to freaking score points. So explosive plays, 12-plus um, uh, yards a run, 16 yards plus a pass. Uh, another telling stat, this is where we have to improve. We have to take our next step, is we were one in four when opponents had more explosives than us. Um, and um, now it's not a given. Now there's some games where we had more explosives and we didn't win the game. So I don't think that's like just the end all be all stat. But when we don't hit those big plays in the game, we were we were one and four. So you know how do we improve on that? Obviously, you got to give your pressure. Got really clearly defined landmarks on those those passes. And an example of that is you know uh, you know our our over the top post take a shot type post is we always try to drop that ball on the hash. That's the landmark for that. There's a couple times where we would motion in or we would run it from a bunch set. And now that landmark has changed. You know, it's more in the middle of the field to maybe the, the left middle part of the field in, inside of the hash. And we missed those throws. And I'm, I'm looking back and I'm saying, man, I should have had clearly defined landmarks. So um, winning situational football, again, it goes back to one word commands for us, Justin. So sticks, when we get to third down, all of our players are saying stick. Stick, sticks, meaning I'm catching the football, taking off of the football, and I'm getting vertical. I'm not dancing. I'm not jumping around. I'm getting vertical, running through uh, tackles to, uh, to get a first down. Points, when we cross the 25-yard line, we're in the red zone, especially quarterbacks, points. That's my one-word command. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. And points means, hey, we're in a position to at least kick a field goal. I can't take a sack. I right. can't turn the ball over. can't have lost yards plays, that type of stuff. So we're really big on the one-word command stuff. That's good stuff. Obviously, we, 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 we compete in practice in those situations. We keep score. You know, when we go into a red zone situation um, in practice, if we get – we win the defense is up and downs. And then the biggest thing my high school coach instilled into me, his name's Bobby Bentley, coaches at the University of South Carolina now. Uh, but – man, he would coach the heck out of this. And it was all 11 guys celebrating t- together. Um, not like six of us running down and celebrating the end zone and five guys jogging off. We wanted – if there weren't all 11 guys in the end zone celebrating together, he would be pissed off, yeah. you know, because that's what the culture he wanted to train. I love our that. Team. So, yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and it's, funny, it's funny, like, now you'll see, like, uh, our offensive line coach, if an offensive lineman does the little O-line shuffle off the field, he'll run out there and, and you know – point towards you know the end zone and go celebrate with with your teammates so that's awesome so anyways that's kind of where we where we uh justin i got some other stuff on here is anything that you wanted to touch on with with that no man everything i've been asking everybody i think you've covered so far so we can keep it keep it going here all right cool so one of the other things you asked was the installation process yes so uh, my, I'm a co-offensive coordinator, and our running backs coach, Newman Isaac, is a co-offensive coordinator. And we're kind of our peak because our head coach, Jamie Chadwell, still calls the plays. So really, Coach Isaac and I's job is to try and try to put him in the best possible situa- situation, take uh, any extra work. As a head coach, he has a lot of things he's got to do. So any extra work we can take off and make it easier for him, that's, that's our job. So I'm thankful that I got another guy first year doing it, we're really kind of working together on it. And uh, man, we got a great work relationship. I've been around him since 2010. I actually played for Coach Chadwell my last two years of college. So I played for a lot of the guys on our staff. So um, man, I've known these guys for a decade, guys that I love and trust. And and uh, so I'm thankful that I got Newland to kind of 
bounce ideas off and all that stuff. But so one of the things you ask is what gets installed first. And what we did this spring is we went back and we watched all of our cut ups. We had the end of the season, you know, efficiency stats. What did we run the most the previous season? You know, and we really kind of went back and, and, and numerically, all right, we ran this play this many times, this concept this many times. Our installation has to be built off of that, what we're going to run the most. So my offensive line is running that play over and over and over and over. And the tags are going to change the quarterback. The tags are going to change the skill guys. But how, how can I have them run this play so many times that when we get to the season, they're not thinking, they're just firing off and reacting. Um, so that's how we – how we started it, you know. Um, and then the second bullet point there, your head coach dic dictates the practice schedule. So I need to match my install based off of our situation. So, um, you know, if our first, uh, I, I think in the spring, day five was our first situation is like a third medium situation. So I got to make sure I've got my, my favorite third medium calls um, during the season. You know, what do we call the most? What do I, when it's third and six and we're playing on the road in the Sun Belt, what do I want my quarterback to feel like, man, I, I can, I can execute this blindfolded. So that was a big part of how we put our installation together. Third bullet point, get on the same page as your defensive coordinator. And, and Coach Stag, Chad Staggs, a fantastic defensive coordinator uh, for us. And he's one of the best resources I have access to. And, um, and I think um, talking to other young OCs, you know, being, uh, you know, first couple of years doing it, Man, take advantage of that resource. You know, ask Coach. I ask. I have a conversation with Coach Staggs before and after almost every practice. We'll go into his. We'll get on his board, and I'll say, hey "Man, how does? How can we make this play? How, how is it more difficult from from your side of things?" And I think that's such an easy concept. But sometimes you get so tunnel vision in on what you're trying to get done, man. You don't think about. I got a great resource in the room next to me to, to ask him some different things. Right. Also get on the same I've done too. the same thing. I've, I, I've worked on staffs where I haven't taken advantage of asking the DC. And I, I think that's, I think that's a great point. I think a lot of guys need to, to use that resource because how he knows how he would line up to it and how he knows, I'm sure how other coordinators would think of that. So I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Oh, it was, it was, it was a great thing. And really this spring, I didn't do it as much last year, this spring, man, I, I tried to make it a, a, a big point. Um, and then uh, the last bullet point there, your first two practice days are in helmets. So day three of your install is our first day of, of padded practice. You know, in the past, we would try to install, 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 and get as much in as you can as quickly as possible. That third day, man, it was like a, it, was, it was a circus, you know, because it's really you're, you're doing three days' worth of concepts, and really this is the third, first day of me at take, doing a padded rep. Right. You know, maybe not a big deal for your seniors who have been running your system, but your first-year players, your second-year players – I think your third practice, I don't know if everybody else's practice layout is that way, but we always try to make day three, hey, this is a review day. Let's do practices one and two. Okay, and then how do we expedite player understanding through that installation process? So I have some things that I think that we do well to try and eliminate any mental mistakes, anything like that. So the first thing we do with our freshmen is we, we have them take what's called the VAC test, and that's, that's an acronym for visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So based off of their answers, I found out if my quarterback is a kinesthetic learner, he learns by performing the action. Uh, I learn a full uh, learner, meaning he learns by watching it on film, or watching somebody else. And then A, auditory, he learns by just hearing it um, and being in the meeting room and listening to it. So most of your players are going to be a, a blend of kinesthetic. But what I learned from that when I was coaching receivers, you know, I, I, I'm more of a visual learner. You know, I'm watching it on tape and I can understand it, but a lot of my receivers were kinesthetic learners. Right. And I wasn't eliminating some of the mental mistakes because I wasn't meeting them where they're at. So when I learned that, um, we did a lot more walkthroughs, like in the meeting room. You know, we moved the chairs out of the way. All right, let's walk through this concept. And it really started building, building on themselves. The second part, uh, two things you must fix. So I think as coaches uh, – you watch practice film with your, with your staff and you're like, you know, you get to the end of the meeting and you've got 20 pages of notes, right? Like uh, you got so many things. you want. And, um, and, and now we focus on, okay, what are the two most important things that I have to fix the most the, the, and prioritize them. And so if I can get at least those two things fixed, the most important fixes that I've got to get corrected, I, I can get those done in one practice and then I'll focus on, on the, the next two things, the next practice. Doesn't mean you don't coach the other things, but you know, each meeting I start out with two bullet points at the beginning of the meeting. It's on a, on a PowerPoint. Hey, we've got to correct our footwork 
on, um, on our rhythm passes. And number two, we picked the wrong side on this concept, eight out of 12, whatever it is, you know, so those, right. I'm going to fix those two things. Um, I think in your meeting, your cut up has to be organized by a concept. So they're seeing the same concept over and over and over. Okay. That one was a good one. That was a bad one. I think that's smart. One thing that we've done in the past is peer review. And what I mean by that is like, it's more so during fall camp when you got a lot of time, but having one of your older guys, a, a guy that's been in the offense actually lead the meeting. And that's a great you, idea. You kind of like, you listen to how they're saying, are they using the same language that you, you would, you would be using right? Uh, teaching the same way. And, uh, and if they start veering off track, you're there to kind of realign them and everything. But uh, I think that's a great resource to figure out if you guys really truly know it. And then the MA chart, we, we keep a, an MA, a missed assignment chart by concept of play. And that's not so much to see how many MAs player X has. I mean, it is a little bit, but it's more so if there's a lot of missed assignments from multiple players, we got to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, okay, is your way for this to be learned? You know, so we've had some really good conversations because a concept will have multiple missed assignments and we'll, we'll change the way we call it to make it, fit how they understand it so that's great that I, I haven't heard that before man that's good that's really good stuff all right um so the next part uh is game planning process how we do it uh i think uh this is going to be a, a lot of stuff but this is basically like a generic example of of our weekly schedule so i'll just like fire through it really quickly um just to get a feel for what our week looks like so Sunday, um, Coach Chow allows our, our staff to, to go to church and enjoy our family in the morning so we don't get started very early Sunday morning. We won't get started until the afternoon, so we're super thankful for that. We'll review the previous game. We'll do that above the line, below the line uh, cut up that I, that I was talking about. What, are we, what effort are we trying to get out of players? And, again, it's not like, hey, what an amazing highlight play. It's more so the, hey, because our right guard had unbelievable effort and got to the second level here, something great happened. Um, your, you script your corrections for Monday's practice, okay? And then when we start game planning for the next opponent, we'll get a personnel breakdown and a scheme breakdown, just an overview from one of our GAs. Hey, this is how they're put together. And then we'll watch two games together. And the two games together is more so to make sure we're identifying coverages the same way, fronts the same way, um, and seeing some of the examples of, hey, this DN is a, is a stud. You've got to make sure you prepare for him and be, be smart there. So. Uh, staff meeting, special teams meeting, and then we're on our own, uh, and this is how we kind of break out our um, assignments, your, your game plan responsibilities. So normal down and distance calls and, and what formations we're going to run out of first and second down on schedule looks is, is a chunk of for three coaches, myself, Coach Eisen, and Coach Chowell. Short yardage goal line and uh, blitz pickup is with our O-line coach and our O-line GA. Explosive plays, you know, what's the trend? What, what, what plays are they – uh, struggling to defend, what routes are they struggling to defend is for our receivers coach and wide receiver GA. Um, one of our GAs will, will start getting a, a, an advanced breakdown on their third downs, and then our tight ends coach will have strike mode when we get to the plus 40 into the red zone. Um, so, so everybody's kind of watching that on their own and uh, after we watch those two games together. Monday, we review the, the previous game with players. Um, you finish your game, game plan responsibilities, and then you present your game plan responsibilities. So now we're all back together and we're talking about the different things that we like, and you're starting to put that, that initial call sheet together. Uh, staff meeting, team meeting. Okay, life after football meeting is always on Mondays. That's where we have an outside speaker come in and talk to our guys about something completely not football related. We've had an we, uh, example of that is uh, uh, we had Jalen Hurts speak to our team uh, just a couple weeks ago, I'm not talking about football. We had a uh, a local banker come and talk to our guys about personal finance, about budgeting. That's usually one of our first ones. So that's, that's one of the really cool things that we do. That I love that we do. Unit meeting, practice, okay. And then we're, we're going through the call sheet Monday night. Tuesday, Coach Chow wants you to take your kids to school. Wednesday, wants you to take your kids to school. Thursday, wants you to take your kids to school. That's, that's awesome. Really I love that. So he's a, he's a great, great man to work for because he loves his family. And um, he tries to build your schedule as best he can to, um, to incorporate that. So Tuesday, uh, we'll start to get into a little bit of our, our third down breakdown, uh, but really Tuesday's practice, you're just doing normal down and distance stuff. Um, actually at practice, uh, a lot of the afternoon is really the, kind of the same thing. Tuesday's practice, we call it Bloody Tuesday. Sorry, Monday is Mental Monday because you're correcting your mistakes from uh, the previous game. 
Tuesday is called Bloody Tuesday because that's your that's your hard hat day, that's your blue collar day, your, your most physical practice of the day of the week. Uh, we'll do recruiting calls on Tuesday night, and then uh, any Coach Isaac and I will start red ink in that call sheet and trying to really streamline it. Wednesday, I uh, get into strike mode, red zone, hot zone. Um, when Wednesday, you're doing normal down and distance, but some situations. And then Wednesday is our coaches' family night, so all of our coaches' families are invited up there. We'll have uh, uh, dinner, uh, devotion. You don't have to come, but uh, it's a great time. Just uh, once we get done with practice, go up there, and there's kids running. It's it's chaos at our at our facility because there's kids running all over the place. Yeah. Um, and then Thursday. Uh, we start vote. We vote on our situations that we came up. So we try to carry four to six, you know, third down, uh, third medium, third short. So we'll vote on them as a staff. And uh, obviously, the head coach who calls a place has the trump card can say, no, nope, we're running this. But we'll usually put it in, the, in, in order based off of what everybody voted, based off of how we executed it, how we feel like it matches up against our opponent. Right. Uh, so I think that's that's a cool thing to do, just because it gives everybody ownership and allows everybody in the room to feel like their voice is, uh, is heard and and valued. Uh, Thursday's uh, practice, uh, we have a free, we have a devotional on Thursday that's optional for coaches, but then Thursday is Attaboy Thursday. We call it Attaboy Thursday because hopefully we're not doing a lot of correcting on Thursday. We're executing just at a, at, a, at, a, at a high level. And we do drive simulations on Thursday. What we started doing last year, Justin, is like we would start a drive on the 50 yard line and you run a couple of your base normal down and distance calls and then you would incorporate your situations into the drive. So a drive would probably be like a 10-play drive for the ones, but they're they're hitting situations as they go, you yeah. know. So I thought that was really – That's uh, awesome. More game day like for the players, you know. Right. Um, and we would take the, the – one, one of the things we said we got to get better is we, we took the pads off of them on Thursday to try to get their legs back. And sometimes when you take the pads off, it, people think it becomes a walkthrough. So we're kind right. of battling that, you know. How do I make sure it's still – hey, we got to execute this at full speed. We're still working on timing on these plays. Thursday – Take your wife on a date. Highly encouraged by our head coach. And then um, Fridays, you know, pretty, right. uh, you know, Friday's Friday. So that's uh, that's a typical week game plan wise. What we do? Uh, Red zone, baby. How, how am I doing on time? Am I good? Good. Yeah, I would say about another 10, 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it's up to you, honestly. But okay, but I want to get to that that uh, the individual stuff. So. Right. You just red quick. zone, how we break it down. Strike mode, what I was talking about at the beginning. When we get to the 40-yard line, that just tells us that's an alert to, to our head coach that, hey, four-down territory. Fourth and one, uh, we're probably going to go for it. We went for it 29 times last year. So we're going to be aggressive when we get to the 40-yard line to try and stay on the field. Red zone for us is plus 25 to the 11. Hot zone is 10 to the 4. And how do we game plan differently? Well, it's just where, where does the defensive coordinator show that he changes things up? You know, if he doesn't change things up until the 11 yard line, then red zone, you're just running your base, your favorite normal down distance calls. I don't think right. you, you got your shot plays, but, uh, and the goal line is the, is the plus three and in. And so what we try to do is like during the summer, during the spring, we build our identity for these situations. So we're not hopefully starting from scratch every week. There might be a wrinkle that you add in, but I think that, that uh, helps us a little bit. Uh, our game day responsibilities, I'm up in the box, but our game day responsibilities are very detailed. It's written out. So I'm responsible for, um, uh, you know, down and distance, field position, field zone, all those different things. We've got one guy that's responsible for watching the strong side of the formation coverage. One guy's watching the weak side of the formation coverage. So it's really, really detailed on where our eyes are supposed to be. And we'll practice that. So game day communication, uh, we'll have our, we'll put our headsets on and we'll like watch a game in the meeting room and we're working on, what we're supposed to look at and how we're communicating back to the coach, to, to our head coach. And we'll kind of review our communication too. Where can we be better? Well, you know, uh, I think that's really, really critical uh, part of, uh, of what you're doing offensively. Don't script every practice period when you're, when you're in practice. So, you know, we always have our headsets on for like our team situations when we're out there. But um, you get a little bit more, a, a better practice if, if you're calling it from a play menu rather than it being scripting. Right. Um, and then the last one is, okay, so uh, how we communicate during the series, it's just minimal communication. Down and distance, front coverage, and field zone alerts. That's it. Shouldn't be a whole lot of conversation outside of that because I want our head coach just to be locked in on, on, on the next play. After the series, we go into more depth. And, but I think the biggest thing is, man, you, gotta, you can't just expect to be good at it on game day if you don't practice it in practice. And I definitely agree with that. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is what I wanted to get to. So quarterback individual drills, and I've got um, three drills that I wanted to share with you at the end, but how we try to put our individual drills together is the philosophy is we want to build playmakers, not robots. And um, we want to improve on our, our on-field performance, not to get better at a drill. That makes no sense. So you need to make your drills complex. And man, a great guy to study, I can't say uh, enough good things about him, is Will Hewlett from Quarterback Collective. Man, he's got some great – Great ideas and talking through him uh, with him uh, some of the individual drills that, that uh, and how you put your individual drill plan together, man, it's a great resource. So I can't say enough good things about him. So, so what we try to do with our, with our individual drills is um, we want to make, make sure that there's a decision on every drill, there's a distraction, and there's pressure because that's what a quarterback has to deal with every single time. So, you know, sometimes in the past, you know, like just last year, last spring, 2019, I would have a, a cone drill set up and I'm pointing at which cone I want them to go, which is good. Good off-season drill, good warm-up drill, but that's, that's not what, you know, Saturdays are like. So right. we've tried, so all these drills, you're trying to make it as game-like as possible. So a decision, meaning I'm having to read the defender, I'm having to work through a progression, there's some decision that has to be made by your quarterback. Distraction, there's some type of reset, there, 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 there's an escape, there's something where a defender's coming out and he has to get out of the pocket contact on the quarterback, giving a bad snap, whatever. There's always going to be distractions. And then how do you make it? There's pressure on game day. How would I make sure there's pressure out there? We keep score with everything that we do. Usually we, we try to throw into those target nets a lot, which isn't game day like, but they're at least they're keeping score. Right. Put it in the net or not. There's a consequence. There's a winner. There's a loser. You create competition. And before I show those drills, I just want to um, put our grad assistants on here. Cody Leducco helps me with the quarterbacks. And the first drill that we're going to um, that I'm going to show you is is his his baby, his brainchild. He came up with it. So uh, I worked with these guys for three years now, Adrian for four years. But if if there's a college coach that watches this video and is looking for uh, young, hungry coaches that do a fantastic job, I can't say enough good things about about these two guys right here. That's awesome. So, um, I want to show you the film now. Okay. Are you seeing? Uh, yep. We're, we're good. Yep. All right. So the first one is affectionately called Peekaboo, and again, this is uh, 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 Coach Leducco, and named in honor of his daughter Cora Leducco, since mm. she likes to play Peekaboo. That's what we call this drill. So uh, let's see here. I think I'm freezing up a little bit. Okay, here we go. Yeah, there we go. We're good now. Okay, Peekaboo. So here's what's going on on this drill. I thought this is a great idea by him. So um, here's the quarterback that's going. This is me. I'm serving as the distraction. So I'm giving him some type of reset right there as he takes a snap. So he has to reset the pocket, reset his feet. So we do a lot of drills where there's some type of reset, but there, there wasn't a decision whether to stay in the pocket and make the throw or scram out of the pocket and make a throw without it being like scripted. We wanted them to, to be able to react to it. All right, so he resets on me. And after his reset, if Coach Leducco, who's standing right here, he's standing behind a pop-up dummy, if he pops open, I'm making that throw from the pocket, if that makes sense. If he stays covered up, okay, he's covered, that means that's telling the quarterback, okay, now I'm going to escape out of the pocket and make a throw on, on a run to a, another target there. So that's why uh, the quarterback escapes right there and makes that throw on the run. Coach Leducco stayed covered up. And we tell this receiver – to mix up the break point, come 45 degrees to them, away from them, in phase with them, at them, change it up. So they're always just constantly reacting to different angles um, and different throws. So that's an example of where he escaped the pocket. Okay, again, I'm the distraction. He coached the duck He pops open. So that's telling the quarterback to make the throw from the, uh, from the pocket instead of escaping out. So we, we thought this was um, – I thought this was a great idea by, by Cody uh, because all of our other drills were um, – I was basically telling him, okay, on this one, I want you to escape the pocket. This one, I want you to throw the pocket. Now you're kind of like combining everything into, into one drill. So here's another example of it. I'm coming as the distraction. He resets up in the pocket. Coach Leducco pops open, so he makes the throw from the pocket. Next one, there's the reset. After he resets – I'm not open, so he scrambles out of the pocket. And then we would mix it up where we wanted him to pull up and make the throw or make the throw on the run. So I just thought that was a good, really good idea of trying to take a, a lot of different drills and kind of morph it into one. And we felt like it was really game day realistic on this right. drill. 
Yeah, I'm a QB guy at heart, so it's, this, is, this is all really good stuff. I'm a big fan of Will, and I'm going to try and get him on here as well to get him to talk some QB oh, plays. Let, so let me know when he's on. I'll watch every, he, He's. I think he's brilliant. Oh, no, he is. He's That's This is right at my wheelhouse. <laughs> all right, so the next one is feel it. So yeah, something similar here. Uh, we don't have live targets. We just got the net set up on this one. So, again, I get a lot of cardio during individual, as you can <laughs> tell. This is a good thing for me, so I'm always kind of the distraction guy. So they're feeling the pocket on me. They're feeling whether to reset here, escape out based off of my path. All right, so I'm the distraction, and then the decision is over here. I'm, I'm working a high-low read on Coach Leducco. So hopefully their, their eyes shouldn't be on me. Their eyes should be here on Coach Leducco. He plays the, the hitch, so we're going to throw the corner out over top. So after we do that, we try to steal as many reps. So I get one from the pocket. We flip him an extra ball, and now he's working a high-low read on either like a sprint out, boot or it could be a scramble but I'm still reading the same guy so there's still a decision to be made wow um, I like that a lot so same thing right here okay distraction he's got a reset there's the decision coach Ducco plays the corner high low on that guy so we just throw the uh, replace and now we're getting one or we're throwing it on the run so good stuff right there simple you're at, but uh you're getting them work a lot of different skills in a shorter amount of time and um and so the, I think I got one more right here under this where, okay, so this one, you've got a curl flat read, horizontal read right here. So there's your rollover. There's your post curl. So here's my two targets. Still, I'm the distraction. And then there's my decision. There's the flat defender. So they reset off of me, and they're using the shoulders to try and move the flat defender to throw the correct uh, receiver. And then we would just change up whatever the second route we wanted him to throw. So on the second route we'd throw, we'd work like a boot concept where you boot out and you're throwing a flat route. So it's just a good way to try and get as many reps into a short 10-minute period as, as possible. Right. On that. Really good stuff, Coach. I like that. All right. And then the last one I got for you is uh, we call it 180. So this one isn't as game day um, realistic. It's more so, okay, you've got a younger guy or a guy that – doesn't have very good balance and kind of makes – obviously, you've got to be able to make awkward body throws, but when he has a clean pocket, he's still not his, – his eyes and his feet aren't, aren't in sequence together. So this is what uh, this drill is, is right here. So I, I'm giving them the snap, and their targets are actually behind them. Right here, one, two, three. And they're resetting on me. So I'm pointing which way I want them to move. So it's obviously, it's not a realistic pocket feel. You could, you could actually probably have your extra quarterbacks – you know, run at them and make them reset. But just for the sake of, of time here, I was just moving them with my with a, a visual cue. And then when I would clap, now he would turn this way and work one to two to three. So it's like you know, the reason we're doing it is we're trying to work their feet and their eyes as they go through a progression, yeah. left to right or right to left. Um, and the, the, the guy that they're uh, choosing is a guy who ever flashes their hands. So they could either flash their hands, one, or number two, they'll they'll uh, break on a, on a break point, and we'll get that in a, in a second. So, but that's what you're just trying. To, that's why we're doing it. So, if you're seeing his eye, his feet and his eyes are in phase. So I'm in phase for that. Move to the second one in phase for that. So, just trying to work on proper balance, proper footwork. To when I'm working through those progressions, if I've got a clean pocket, I've got a um, my feet, my eyes are together. So he had the third target. They're just flashing their hands. I think this is one where they start break. Uh, they give you a break point. Reset, 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 clap. So whoever breaks, that's the one he's going to throw to. And you're going to see some com comical falls. I got to redo <laughs> this, this drill tape because some of the uh, some of the throws and some of the catches were hard to watch. Like I Trey do. almost tears his groin on one of these plays here in a second. <laughs> so the first one was open. So, anyways, um, I just want to share some of those with those because um, I, I think everybody always wants wants. Hey, what drills can I do? And I think there's a million great resources out there, but it goes back to, for, for us, is there a decision, is there a distraction, and is there pressure? Because if not, I'm just getting them better at a cone drill rather than improving their on-the-field performance. And I know when I started as a QB coach, I fell victim to that. I was, I was doing drills that, that didn't translate. All footwork stuff you see on YouTube, but the more you talk with, and you see like Will and some of those guys tweet out, it's, you got to get it as, as much as you can down to the game day experience. No doubt. What they do, they throw routes on the run, they throw from the pocket, so they, they got to do those things and practice. So it's and, and, and just to backtrack, during my individual time, I'm doing those drills. If it's like pre-practice, I'm warming them up, the cone drills, the ladder drills, good with it because I'm just trying to get them warmed up with that. Right. Point. We'll still do those things, but when I've got my 10-minute, my, my chunk of, of goal time that I get, 
or sometimes we'll get even more than that. 15 times I want to do game day uh, specific drills. Right. And I, I, I really appreciate you coming on, dude. Those last three drills, whenever I get back into coaching, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take those. So I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. And talking, no problem, man. Talking appreciate you having me on. You're doing yeah, a great it's, thing. There's a lot of great content that you're putting out there. And you know, it's funny. I don't know. We started messaging each other like five years ago. If you, if you go back through the, uh, the DMs on Twitter, because you would post like this spread offense is called concept. You post this video and I'd ask you about it. So it's kind of. Oh, cool. shit. I didn't even realize that. I need yeah. to go back through and look at it. I didn't even yeah. realize. Yeah. We got history, man. Yeah. <laughs> back from the beginning. Well, dude, I really appreciate it. If, you, if we're playing this fall, I'm going to be definitely paying attention. And good luck this fall. And I really appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, Justin. Appreciate it, man. All right, brother. Take it easy. Thank you.